In the last video, we were talking about rectification and the idea that we're trying to smooth out and sort of make a nice DC signal from an AC. Remember this alternating current, like this potential difference here, is uh, not very helpful for us, especially if we want to get a nice direct current signal. So one way was to do half wave rectification, which means in the circuit diagram you put in one diode, and that rectified it, which means it took the negative part and chopped it. And then we learned that if you add a capacitor to that little piece right there, that allows it, remember what the diode does, right? It only cuts, it only lets half of the um, uh, potential difference or the current through. And so by doing this right here, adding the, cap the capacitor, it allows the current, uh, sorry, the capacitor to charge while there's uh, current flowing through it. But then uh, when the current doesn't flow through this thing right here, then it can discharge and sort of add. So this was a matter of rectifying and smoothing it. But the problem was it only does it one time per cycle. And we have something better. We can call it now full wave rectification. To do that, it looks a lot like the half wave. I remember here we had a, a diode right here, except what you do is you split up your coils into two and you add a diode on the bottom. So what you do is you put it like this. So can you see this one right here? You put your coils, maybe half the coils over here. We call it a center tap because we put a little you know, line right here where you can connect things. Um, and then you end up putting another diode there. You still have that little uh, capacitor there. So I'm going to show you this is rectified and smoothed. In other words, I already put the capacitor in there. So what this is going to allow you to do is, if you think about it, it's going to allow you to do this sort of rectifying and smoothing in one part of the cycle, but also the other part of the cycle. So it's going to take the top and the bottom parts and do it. So what this will end up looking like, it'll end up doing, uh, let me show you here. So if we just rectified it, what it would do is it would take the top part, keep it positive. That would be this top part right here. And what would end up happening is this, when the... Uh, current reverses direction, it would actually take that piece and let that piece through as well. So what it'll do is it'll put that one up above as well, and then another one, and another one, and so on. Now what ends up happening is this, the one full cycle though is actually this. So let me just show you here. One full cycle, this is the top part. This is where it would have been the bottom part. It just took it, let it through. So that's why it sort of reversed it. So this is actually one full cycle right here. And so is this. This is, that's one cycle. See before, one cycle was all the way up, then it was, you know, chopped, and then all the way up again. So this was one full cycle in the half wave rectification. Now I got full wave rectification. This is still the same cycle. This would be the same time here, whatever time that was. Um, except now it sort of, it ha adds like two bumps, like boing, boing. It looks like a bouncing ball or something like that. So this is what it does. It does it two times per cycle. Um, now I've put it already not just rectified but also smoothed because I've got the capacitor in there. So this time, just, just for fun, I showed you the rectified and smoothed one. Right now this is the curve for just rectified and not smoothed. In order to have it rectified and smoothed, which is what this really will do because a capacitor you know, can discharge and then charge and discharge, it'll go up and what it'll do of course, then the capacitor then discharges like this and then it charges again. And then discharges and it charges again and discharges. I'm sort of making my eyebrows do it for some reason. I don't know why. This is much, much better. Do you see how this is a lot more direct? See this one here? It's DC-ish. I mean, it's not perfect, but you know, it's sort of direct current-ish. I mean, it's it's a, at least a pretty constant potential difference or um, a, a current. So the only problem is this. This is the sort of hard part about it is that you need twice the number of coils to do this. So in other words, depending on how many coils you needed for half wave rectification, the problem is you need more coils to do this. Okay, that's not necessarily a deal breaker, but that's, that's how you can do full wave rectification by just using two diodes and uh, the capacitor. So now comes the next part, the part that scares a lot of people. Full wave rectification using a diode bridge. And a lot of people look at this and go, oh, <laughs> they want to throw up just like this. <laughs> I love this picture. This is from Dumb and Dumber. I just love this. This guy wants to throw up. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, now, there is an advantage to using full wave rectification with a diode bridge. The advantage is you need less coils. So I guess if there's a real shortage on coils in the world, you know, that's something that's an advantage. The disadvantage is you need to use lots more diodes. Well, lots double. Um, and the circuit looks pretty gross.
So, I mean, this makes you feel like that. So here's what's going on. We have the same sort of transformer circuit before. The AC is coming into the primary. In the secondary, we still have some coils here and then a center, uh, just to show you sort of where the center tap used to be. The issue is now we draw this thing called a diode bridge. You basically have the diodes. Can you see this one here pointing that way? So it lets things sort of up and right, and so does that one. The ones here let them down and right and down and right. And you still have this sort of um, capacitor here. The advantage is this is going to still do the same sort of thing. It's still going to be um, having this thing rectified and smooth. It's going to be very much like this example over here, you know, with the uh, two diodes and the capacitor. The advantage is you need less coils to do it. So it's just another way of doing it. And the way it kind of works is that uh, it's going to end up allowing you to rectify things uh, on both parts of this uh, cycle as well. So uh, maybe just to show you a little bit how it works, I like this diagram right here. It sort of shows it more clearly. When you have the sort of positive part of the current, so to speak, you can see then the current will go sort of up and then it'll go sort of that way. And look at this then. It's got these two diodes. Those are the ones going down and right. So let's see, like that'll be for you, that'll be like this. Then it allows things to go that way. So can you see what'll happen is this. It'll only allow this one here through here Right, so that'll be the load right there. And then, it'll, and then it goes through here and then back over here. So basically it just goes like this and then goes wee back in. So that sort of rectified it one way. But the advantage is that, uh, and it also smooths it. The advantage is in the other part of the cycle, so when the cycle sort of reverses like this, watch what cap happens here. This time it goes like this, and instead of going through here, see that diode cuts it, doesn't allow it to go. So these ones right here that go sort of up and right like both of these sort of diodes, both of them going up and right. Imagine then this current can go this way, then it goes through that one, then through here, and then does this sort of little circuit like this. So this rectifies and smooths that piece of the circuit. So that's just why we've got this piece right here. Because remember what it was being fed. If you look at it, what's being fed to it, see this top part here and this bottom part right here? That's what we're sort of feeding it. We're kind of feeding it an AC signal. Can you see those are the top and bottom parts of this one here? Can you see that's here and here? We're sort of feeding it an AC signal here. We're giving it AC, you know, across this and across this. So that's why, see, we just feed it an AC signal here, and it basically rectifies and smooths it itself through this really clever arrangement of diodes. So maybe then you don't quite feel like throwing up as much. Uh, now I've got an example for you. So let's do this. Let's sketch a graph of the potential difference versus time across these points A and B. So think very carefully. Is this full wave rectification or is this half wave rectification? Oh, wait a second. I need to go back here and show you something else. Whoops. The advantage was here, I just want to point this out. The advantage was you do this two times per cycle. You know, you, you get to rectify and smooth two times in a cycle. That's why it's called full wave. I don't know why I didn't say that before. That's really important. This here is really important. So if your you know cycle was, I don't know, let's say like five milliseconds, then you do it, you do it twice. It happens two times within that five milliseconds. Whereas the halfway of rectification, let's say this is five milliseconds, it only smooths it once. So that's sort of an advantage. Sorry about that. Uh, now let's go back and look at this example. We want to sketch a graph of the potential difference versus time across points A and B. So again, we're going to do this sort of sketch like this if we can. Let's see here. I'll draw like this. And I need another line of the line. Yeah, sure, like this. And I'm going to label this time in seconds. And I'm going to label this the potential difference, which will be in volts. So let's take a look at what this will look like. What kind of rectification circuit is this? Is this full wave or half wave? You know it's going to be full wave. Do you know why you know it's full wave? Two diodes. That's half. Because you have two diodes. If you had one diode, it would have been half wave. Look, look back here. The half wave rectification only used one diode. In order to have two diodes going on right here, can you see it's one of these? But do you notice we don't have the capacitor plugged in? Look at the circuit that I gave you. It looks just like this here without the capacitor. Look, uh, here's the example. We don't have a capacitor here. So do you notice we're going to be doing rectification, but we're not going to do smoothing. Do you know why no smoothing? Because you needed the uh, capacitor to do the smoothing, you know, in order to um, to allow that capacitor to discharge and do the smoothing. So we're going to do rectification, but not smoothing. So in this case here, let's take a look then. What will that look like? And it's going to be full wave because you've got one diode here and one diode here. So if we put the voltmeter across these points A and B, 
we're going to end up with something that's going to look like, let's see here, it's going to look like, um, well, it's going to want to go like this right here, and like this. Actually, never mind, it doesn't have to be dotted line, it'll be solid line, it'll be like this. So it'll go like this. So it'll be up and down and up and down and up and down like this. This will be rectified but not smoothed. And remember, if you really want to be careful, I think it's sometimes a good idea to show where your one period is. This is one full cycle. So in other words, it does it two times. You know, it has two sort of bumps here per cycle. So that's the important thing here. I think it's just important to know what these drawings will look like. So that was, it was rectified, but not smoothed. See over here, we have the one that was rectified and smoothed. So that's just the difference. So I hope this helps you out. I hope this makes more sense and you don't feel like throwing up quite as much at least.